Hi folks, I'm Dr. Jay Chapman. Today we're going to examine Olympic National Park and learn about accretionary complexes, accreted terrains, and why it's so darn rainy in the Pacific Northwest. Olympic National Park, located west of Seattle on the Olympic Peninsula in Washington State, is part of the Coast Ranges. The Coast Ranges are a very special chain of mountains that extend from the Strait of Juan de Fuca in the north to around Santa Barbara, California to the south. The mountains are located on the Pacific Coast and they're separated from the rest of the United States by large valleys, including the Central Valley in California, Willamette Valley in Oregon, and the Puget Sound region in Washington. This geography isn't random. It's directly related to the underlying geology. Coincidence? I think not! The Pacific Northwest is a convergent plate boundary and lies above a subduction zone where an oceanic tectonic plate, the Juan de Fuca Plate, slides beneath North America. It's why there are so many volcanoes in this area, like Mount St. Helens. As the Juan de Fuca plate subducts, sediments that were deposited on the ocean floor or in the subduction trench get scraped off and pile up in a thick wedge, like sand in front of a bulldozer. This feature is called an accretionary wedge or accretionary complex because the sediment is transferred off the subducting plate and onto the upper plate where it gradually accumulates or accretes. Until about 30 million years ago, before the San Andreas Fault formed, the entire west coast of the United States was a giant subduction zone and the coast ranges in California were formed by the same processes that geoscientists observe in the Pacific Northwest today. The broad valleys located to the east of the coast ranges, like Willamette Valley, are formed because of a low spot sandwiched between the accretionary complex to the west and the chain of volcanoes to the east. Mmm, sandwich! Geologists call this type of valley a four-arc basin. Four! because it's located before you get to the volcanic arc when traveling inland from the coast. Let's take a look at a geologic map of Olympic National Park. The pale yellow colors represent young, unconsolidated sediments covering up the other rock types. The green colors represent the sediments and rocks that make up the accretionary complex. The purple colors represent mainly basalt called the crescent formation. The crescent formation is easy to remember because it has a curved crescent-like outcrop pattern in map view. The reason it is curved is because the accretionary complex rocks in the center of the park were piled up beneath the crescent formation and caused it to dome upwards, with the center of this dome located around Mount Olympus. As it was domed upward, the rocks on top of the dome were eroded away, so only the rocks on the edge of the dome are preserved in a crescent shape. <laughs> you can see the crescent formation on Hurricane Ridge Road on the drive into the park from Port Angeles, where the formation consists predominantly of pillow basalt. Pillow basalt forms when lavas are erupted underwater and form smooth, bulbous masses that look like pillows. Geologists have discovered basaltic rocks similar to the Crescent Formation throughout the northern coast ranges, and they are all Eocene in age, about 50 to 55 million years old. Collectively, these rocks are called the Siletz Terrain or Siletzia, named after the Siletz River in Oregon. Terrain, not to be confused with terrain, is a large fragment of crust, oceanic or continental, it doesn't matter. It matters most. That is markedly different from the surrounding rocks and was transported there from someplace else. Sometimes they're called exotic terrains because the rocks are so different from the surrounding region and they may have traveled very far distances, perhaps thousands of kilometers. <laughs> There are a few different ideas about how the Sluts terrain originated, but one popular hypothesis is that it's related to a hot spot in the eruption of basalt on the seafloor, like Hawaii. Check out the Hawaiian volcanoes or Yellowstone videos for more information about hot spots. Regardless of how it formed, the Sluts terrain started off as a huge pile of basalt on an oceanic tectonic plate that was rafted into a subduction zone, where the basalt pile was scraped off and accreted to North America. So we have two episodes of accretion preserved in Olympic National Park. The first was the Siletz terrain during the Eocene, and the second is the oceanic sediments that make up the accretionary complex, an ongoing process. It never stops. It's a little misleading to say the accretionary complex is made of sediment because these sediments have been lithified into sedimentary rocks, and in some place, metamorphosed into metamorphic rocks. If we take another look at the geologic map of the National Park, you can see there are light green colors near the Pacific Ocean and darker green colors in the core of the park. These are all accretionary complex rocks, but the dark green colors represent rocks that have been metamorphosed, where the light green colors represent rocks that are still sedimentary rocks. The best place to see the sedimentary rocks is to hike along the coast. 
Much of the coast consists of a type of rock called melange, which is a jumbled up mass of rock fragments of different lithologies and different sizes. The rock fragments can be pea-sized or as large as a house. This chaotic mixture is exactly what you'd expect to find in an accretionary complex that was formed by sediments scraped up and bulldozed together. The fine-grained melange rocks, like mudstone, readily erode away and tend to form embayments and coves with beaches, like the first, second, and third beach near La Push. More resistant and competent rocks tend to form headlands and points. As the coast erodes, these headlands may eventually become separated from the mainland where they form sea stacks, some of the most famous features within the park. One of the best places to see some of the more competent, coherent sedimentary rocks up close is at Beach 4 north of Claylock. These rocks are chiefly turbidites, a type of sedimentary rock formed by underwater density currents carrying sediments from shallower waters into the deep sea, sort of like an underwater debris flow or landslide. When the turbidity currents reach the sea floor, they begin to slow down and the larger sand particles settle out of the water first and the smaller sand particles settle out later. As a result, individual turbidite sandstone layers are coarser grained at the bottom and finer grained at the top, which is called a graded bed. A plus. You'll need to head inland to see metamorphosed accretionary complex rocks. The metamorphosed sedimentary rocks in the core of the Olympic Mountains experienced temperatures up to about 200 degrees Celsius and were buried to around 10 kilometers deep, corresponding to lower green schist to blue schist facies metamorphic conditions. The trajectory of rocks in accretionary complexes follow a curved path, so the rocks that are at the back were also buried the deepest and experienced the most heat and pressure, the most metamorphism, until faulting and erosion exhumed the rocks back up to the surface. Let's exhum a zoom zoom! The erosion in Olympic National Park is particularly intense because of the orographic effect, which occurs when air is forced to flow over high topography like a mountain. The westerlies blow warm, moist air from the Pacific Ocean over the Olympic Mountains. As the air rises, it cools according to the adiabatic lapse rate, which is around 7 degrees Celsius per kilometer of elevation change. As the air cools, water vapor condenses, causing precipitation. The higher the mountains, the more precipitation. So Mount Olympus just gets dumped on, receiving around 20 feet of rain each year. It's why the west side of the park is a rainforest. As the air descends the back side of the mountains, it's depleted in moisture and it warms up as it descends. So it can hold more water vapor, resulting in a rain shadow or a relatively arid region. In this case, the Seattle-Tacoma region. As wind continues to blow eastward, it forces air to flow back up over the Cascade Mountains and there is another orographic effect with a burst of precipitation on these mountains and another rain shadow on the eastern side. By the time the air reaches central and western Washington, the air is very dry, resulting in desert-like conditions. One of the coolest things about Olympic National Park is that the intense rain and erosion caused by the orographic effect appears to be in a delicate balance with rock uplift associated with the growth of the accretionary complex. This means that the mountains have reached a steady state or equilibrium state where the rate that they are getting worn down by erosion perfectly matches the rate that they are growing. If the mountains were start to grow and get higher, the orographic effect would increase, causing more rain and more erosion to bring the elevation back down. If the mountains were to start to shrink or get lower, the orographic effect would weaken and erosion would become less, allowing the mountains to regain their elevation as the bulldozer keeps scraping off rocks. It's a fascinating case where climate and erosion and plate tectonics have found a way to live in harmony. Hey, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos and share them with friends and family. Take care.